In February 1996, a Dutch Roman Catholic passed away in Holland by the name of Piet Derksen. I told you about him already in one of my sermons many years ago, but today I want to tell you about him again because I consider him to be a wonderful man and more worth talking about than about the Dutch football team. During his life, Pete, Pete was a very successful businessman. Somebody, as they say, with gold in his fingertips. So much so, that at a certain point of his career, he was a multimillionaire. And yet, when he finally died, he was poor. Why? Had he been gambling? Had he lost all his millions, perhaps by speculating too much on the stock market? Or by another stupid mistake? Not at all. Fact is that after a deep conversion experience, this rich multimillionaire literally spent all the money he had for the sake of evangelization, the spreading of God's kingdom on earth. He put his money, for instance, in the foundation, witness for God's love, and in an international school for Catholic journalists, in an evangelistic broadcast corporation in America, in three Catholic magazines, and in the radio and te television broadcast corporation of Lumen 2000. He subsidized international charismatic gatherings like the one I attended myself years ago, together with 4,000 other priests. He was a man absolutely and totally possessed by his desires to spread the message of the gospel. I remember how at one time he sent an envelope to many Dutch people, including 10 guilders each, which is as much as about 10 Singapore dollars. And he wrote, my dear friend, Hereby, I send you 10 guilders, just like that. Now, do with them whatever you like. Seeing a picture, God bless you. Going to a restaurant to eat something nice. I wish you good luck. But what about buying yourself a Bible? Why not? And believe it or not, many Dutch people bought a Bible with the ten dollars they received. At the end of his life, Pete had lost all his money. And not surprisingly, you may say, he was really as poor as a church rat. But that did not matter to him in the slightest. All that mattered to him, he used to say, was to live in the love of a personal God and to spread his kingdom on earth. Hey, brothers and sisters, this is just one modern example of what happens to a man when his heart is deeply touched by the good news of the Bible. I see intentionally when his heart is touched, when the message of the Bible really sinks in. I would almost say with the words of the gospel, when the seed of God's word really sinks in, not only in his head, but also in his heart.
Because I'm sure there's hardly anybody in our church who does not roughly know what the Bible tells us. That Jesus died for our sins, that we are loved and cherished by the heart of a personal God, etc., etc. We know it all in theory. But does it also touch the depth of our heart? That need not always be the case, even with practicing Catholics. I still remember the testimony of an old man who told us in the priest meeting, Dear fathers, I have been a faithful Catholic from the days that I was a child, but it is only recently that my heart was so deeply touched by the message of the Bible that now I keep reading and rereading that book, asking myself how it is possible that I ever missed it before. That is why the church has introduced Bible Sunday today, to call us up, to make the Bible again the book of our heart. makes the Bible such a fascinating book that so many people have wanted to read it. A Russian communist in the time that communism was still in Russia and calling the shots, so to say, and in which you could not have a Bible, otherwise you would go to prison. But a Russian communist once wrote to a friend in the West, please send me a copy of the book whose author I do not know, but which you call the Bible. I would like to see what it is like. I beg you urgently to send me a copy. Do we hear the longing of the man? I want to see it. I want to hold it in my hands. And I want to read it. In the Catholic News, I once saw that in the last five years, five millions of Bibles have been sold in China. People are willing to travel for days to buy one copy that cost them 5% of their entire salary. Why? What do they see in that book? According to some recent statistics, the Bible Society um, to meet its demands had to publish 1,369 copies every hour, day and night, to meet the demands and according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, by 1966 the whole Bible, or parts of it, had been translated in 1,280 languages. is the message that makes the Bible so universally appealing that some people have even given their lives for it. If that is true, then it cannot all be poppycock, poppycock, can it? Then there must be something in that book so wonderful and of such an infinite value and importance that people wanted to get it at all costs. So let us make the Bible the book also of our lives. In the past, many Catholics seem to think the Bible is not for us. We Catholics have the Mass, we have Mother Mary, whereas reading the Bible is more for the Protestants. Nonsense, of course. The Bible is not only meant for Protestants. In fact, is in the first place our book. If we Catholics had not started writing it, I mean, or the New, Te the New Testament, starting writing it, copying it, preserving it for the centuries, the book would not even have been here. And today, the church invites us to make this Bible again the center 
of our spiritual lives. But the Bible is so difficult to understand, you say. Then make an extra effort to understand it. You know, years ago, I read my first computer book. I couldn't understand a thing of what I was reading. I thought I had never read such an abysmal nonsense as in my first computer book. But now I understand it and I can read it as though it is a novel. I find it very, very interesting. So make an extra effort. Follow a Bible course. Listen to a teacher who can help you further. Buy the book if you don't have it. The sisters here stand at the table with Bibles for sale and also help full material if you want to be helped also in reading the Bible. And most of all, take your time to read and reread it again and again and again so that the seed of God's word can take root in you. Read it until what you read there will begin to sink into your heart as it certainly will if you do your best and will begin to, be, to become such a heartfelt treasure for you that you will never like to miss it anymore for the rest of your lives.